Hey everyone, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we've got more Ed Litton things coming up next. <sighs> All right, hey everybody. So, welcome to the show. Um, this is the show where I do cultural commentary and biblical worldview analysis. Contra being against Mundum is the world pro mundo, but for the world. So being against the world for the sake of the world. That is something, it's Latin, and it's basically a a phrase of, of what the Christian, I believe, is to be. Not a force of liberation, of liberating people out of oppressive situations only, as liberation theology says, or getting health wealth only in this life, and that's it. Or only for heaven, you know, a lot of people, wow, very conservative, just, wow, we're, for, we're fit for heaven, that's it, we're just waiting for Jesus, pearly, pearly gates, the whole thing. But rather, Christ is Lord of all. He is sovereign, and his word is true, and his word should be brought to bear on everything, whether it's politics or culture uh, in general, economics, um, society, education, and everything else, you name it. And so that's the goal of being against the world because the world has an ideology. The world has a worldview, just like you do, <clears throat> whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. The point is you have a worldview. Me, is my goal is to be against the world and its assumptions about the church, about the Bible, about Jesus. And sometimes that crosses over when the church acts like the world. And that's what we're talking about with Ed Litton. Uh, I'm thankful for the new subscribers, by the way. I've had a slew of new subscribers lately. Keep sharing, keep uh, posting. I'm doing Gab now. A little more regularly, I'm posting on there these episodes and other things. I also have the talk show, Contra Talk, which is a uh, longer form where I interview different people. I just posted one about uh, education. And I'd be curious if you guys check that out here. That's with um, Ben Merkel, Dr. Ben Merkel. He's an Oxford PhD. He's the president of New St. Andrews College there and he does ministry with a bunch of people up in Moscow. He's part of Doug Wilson's um, Canon Press and that whole thing. So it's not just Doug Wilson, it's a bunch of people actually doing good work up there. Anyway, other thing, I had some disparaging comments about a Reese's peanut butter cup a few weeks ago. I have a Reese's big cup. I'm not going to eat it because I'm doing no sugar right now. However, one in particular viewer, she might be watching, Bethany H., and I hope she doesn't mind me saying that. She called me out. I'm not going to say sorry necessarily. Not like Ed Litton does. We'll see. Um, but I was really comparing the little kind of gritty small peanut butter cups, the small ones, to the Trader Joe's ones. I think the Trader Joe's ones are still much better. However, these are very good. These are the king, king size? I thought it was king cup. That'd be better. It's not a paid advertisement. Anyway, that's not why you're here. You're here because you want to hear about Ed Litton. So we're going to listen to a podcast. This was brought to my attention um, by another YouTuber, Reformation Charlotte. And uh, they played a similar clip. This is going to be a little bit longer. It's not the exact. But I just want to give a quick shout out to them uh, for at least bringing this to my attention. Yeah, so Ed Litton was on a podcast recently. And so this is posts, you know, catch you up. I've got some other videos if you want. Uh, some of those really uh, expose a lot and show a lot and raise a lot of questions about integrity and truth and plagiarism and so many other things. And so, let's move this a little closer. So, I did a few of those. I haven't covered Ed Litton. In one sense, I don't really want to. Like, I want to just, just, just do the right thing, man. Do the right thing, pastor, president. I'm a Southern Baptist pastor myself, small church here in Kentucky. And... Our website, if you're curious, is newharvestbaptist.org. Um, New Harvest Baptist, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've got some sermons there if you're curious about that. They're just audio. But anyway, he's my president, right? And so it matters what the world sees, what the world says. It matters what the church is doing. And so Ed Linton's been pretty quiet. Most of that stuff broke out in early July. It's now mid to late, what is it, the 25th of August. And so we're looking at a little bit of time, and he's done some appearances here and there. I haven't really talked about it. This is the first one I've seen that talks more about it. He doesn't, the hosts, there's three of them, uh, too many hosts for a podcast in my opinion, but whatever, uh, and then a guest. 
they don't use the word plagiarism or anything like that, but they push a little bit and they say, well, we don't normally venture into controversy. Well, here's the thing. I'm not venturing into controversy either. The person who causes the controversy is the one who's doing the, the controversy, right? So don't be, don't be maligned and say, like, it's like the bully who says, hey, you know what? You just got in the way of my fist. I, I didn't punch you. You were just standing there as I extended my arm out. Like, that's the kind of nonsense that a lot of people use is like, no, 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 it wasn't me. I didn't punch you in the face and then kick you when you fell down. No, I, I didn't do that. You got in the way of my fist and my foot, okay? So, oh, by the way, guess what kind of coffee I have? I'll tell you at the end. But drop a comment if you want. It does help the algorithm. It really does. I appreciate it. Like and subscribe and, and whatnot. Um, get this content out to more people. And if I get a certain threshold, I'm going to start making t-shirts and other things. I might not. We'll see. No, I, I plan to. Uh, I've got a few fun, random contra contra shirts maybe we'll call it that anyway so Litton does this podcast episode 224 the potluck podcast. california this will be the first time i've shared it on any kind of format so uh basically the theme is uh jesus the center of it all and and it's based off colossians 1 uh, chapter 1 15 through 23 but primarily uh obviously colossians 1 18 uh putting jesus or i say putting jesus he's already there recognizing Jesus as the center of it all, let some things go. Well, let me say this. It's important because it was important to Jesus. John chapter 17, this was his high priestly prayer. He said, Father, I want them to be one as you and I are one. And so we have an obligation unto him to be unified, to work for unity, uh, to, to work at, at giving honor and love and appreciation to one another and accepting the, the variations that we have uh, that are not essential. And, and so things that are, that are important to see. Uh, I think the other reason is it's our credibility. Uh, Jesus made it very plain that by this, they will know you're my disciples, that you loved one another. And the world is not watching us love one another well. And, and so one of the things we have to each individually do, because we're, we're very autonomous and independent churches and people, <laughs> that we, we need to, by choice, out of obedience to him, for his glory, love one another visibly. And to encourage one another. And so a lot of things that we go public with, we ought to go private with first. And we, we ought to, and I'm not talking putting on a show. I'm talking about from the heart, loving one another. My politics takes a backseat to the gospel. And what I'm seeing happen is, uh, happening is amazing. God is bringing the nations to us. And not only are we ascending people, but we are also people who receive those that are coming all right, so first of all, uh, he cites a few passages of scripture, love one another. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, that's good. And I would agree, unity, right? We should be, you know, there's an old phrase, many people have said it. It's about plagiarism and whatnot, so we, it's not mine. But like, unity in the essentials and liberty in the non-essentials and all things charity, I think is kind of how it goes, right? So unity in the essentials, Christ died for sinners he rose from the dead. He is the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but through him. There is a trinity. God is a trinity. He fills us with the, with the Spirit. God is the creator. Um, he upholds all things. He sustains the universe. Those are orthodox principles, right? We should meet as a church. We should read the scripture. We should pray. We should do all these things. So that's unity, okay? And then there's liberty in the non-essentials, right? Well, you know, you think uh, you should have a pastor, and I think we should have more than one pastor. You think you should meet outside and church buildings are bad, or this or that, or, you know, you think uh, women can be deacons. I don't, I don't think so. You know, you use the KJV only, I use ESV, or whatever, right? There's certain things like that. You know, we interpret cessationist, non-cessationist, different views uh, on the beginning and, and the end times and so on. And we could get into all that, and I have a bit on this channel, and I intend to a lot more. So stay tuned for more teaching. I'm going to probably start doing some more formal teaching as well uh, before too long. So that being said, we have to, we are Baptists, though. We are Southern Baptists. So it's not a matter of, yes, there's a big tent, and we're kind of like the Republicans or the Democrats, and there's a big tent and a lot of bunch of different people. Yeah, but we are all supposedly washed in the blood of Christ. We're all supposedly surrendered to his lordship. We're surrendered to him, 
Now, keep in mind, there's like 50,000, 40,000, whatever the number is, Southern Baptist churches and millions and millions of people. So we're talking about a man who's leading millions and millions of people. Now, we can see how well that's working for the current resident of the United States in uh, Biden. He's not doing a very good job leading 330 plus 40 million people, right? You can biff it big time. And Lytton, I'm not saying he's nearly as bad as Biden, but he's just kind of talking. All right, unity, we got to do this, we got to do that. What does that mean, though? What what are these essentials? You know, gospel, Christ is the center of all. Last year was the gospel above all. Okay. So they're asking him about this and his plan, and it's kind of edited, the, the audio here. But <clears throat> we have to ask, what is he talking about, right? John... Um, 13, 34, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so also you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Lord, where are you going? Simon Peter says. Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow later. Lord, said Peter, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. You will lay down your life for me. Excuse me, will you lay down your life for me? Jesus said, truly, truly, I tell you, there will be I'm biffing it. Truly, truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Okay. So this love is, I have loved, is agapesa, or agapase. Probably agapase. Agapase. Still a derivative of agape. So they're still all talking about agape. Well, where do we see that love chapter, right? The famous love chapter in agapain, love. I may boast, and he's talking about love there. So it's the same word, right? So we can then see this is the same word that Paul's talking about, that Jesus is talking about. It's not brotherly love, which is where we get the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia or Philos. But 1 Corinthians 13, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but not have love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers, utter mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but not love, I am nothing. If I give all away and I deliver my body up to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. So right there, first of all, if you give all your stuff away for the social gospel cause and social justice and equity and this and that and the other, and you don't have love, you don't have this actual love, if you're saying all these things and you're not having love, it's pointless. Verse 4, love is patient and it is kind, does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable. Or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will be done away with. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to reason like a child, think like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things, he says. We don't typically dive into controversy here. We usually just share the, the news and some of our views on uh, various Southern foods and so forth. We don't usually even share well, no a whole lot of commentary. It's just I know. Everybody just loves it. We can get along as we're eating together. Uh, but there have been some voiced concerns regarding your preaching, right. even calls for you to resign, not just the uh, presidency, but also at your own church. If you had just a few minutes to simply share your heart, sure. uh, clear the air, whatever it may be. What would you say to the Southern Baptists who may hear this and maybe even share some of those same concerns? Yeah, listen, I, I understand why some people are concerned. I really do, because of what they're hearing. And uh, I... Okay, okay. I understand why some people are concerned because of what they're hearing. Now, what's he talking about? Is he talking about my videos? Is he talking about Justin Peters' videos? Is he talking about <clears throat> A.D. Robles' videos or John Harris? Um, is he talking about other videos that are out there? Is he talking about the multiple, multiple videos of him 
side-by-side preaching J.D. Greer and Tim Keller sermons. And uh, I, I just, and there's videos, and even people in my church, we, we've sat down and talked uh, about it. Uh, and there's publications, things being said. So the best way I can describe, uh, really, it's most of its centers, not all, but most of its centers around a Roman series that we did uh, last year. And when we were outlining the series, you know, that's a responsible part of pastoring and, and preaching is that if you're going to preach through something, you want to outline what you're going to cover each week. And uh, so I was looking to do that, and I was in the process of doing that. And I remembered that my friend J.D. had already done that, so I called him. My friend J.D. Not J.D. Greer, the former president of the SBC, but yeah, my friend J.D. And I said, can you send me a spreadsheet? He keeps his on a spreadsheet that shows me how you outlined it. I want to see how mine's lining up if I'm, if I'm approaching this right. And in that process, he gave me permission not only to do that, he said, any material at all, you're welcome to it. And I appreciated that. And, and I had no intention of doing anything with it, except uh, I enjoy listening to him and I, and I enjoy how he handles certain things. I had no intention of l- using it. So he's, this is where, this is where I'm really confused. I emailed Lytton's church and I, they got back to me and I'll read that email here um, in a second, but <sighs> I emailed them, they got back to me, and then, oh yeah, I'll pass this on to Pastor Lytton. And then somebody from, I think, his office, like the president office, uh, said, hey, let's talk. And I asked him about, uh, well, can we do this publicly? Uh, No, between you and me. Well, I haven't had that conversation yet. I don't know if we will. This was almost a week ago. I said, good afternoon. This was the beginning of August. I said, I'm a husband, father, pastor of a small Southern Baptist church and a recent grad of Southern Seminary. I have concerns of the allegations of plagiarism. I and four members of our church went to the SBC meeting in June, and with the concerns of CRT, female preaching, and many other issues, it was mildly contentious, and it was. So there was allegations, that was before the allegations from named sources, Ed Linton himself, of plagiarism. Not just a single sermon or two from J.D. Greer, but others like Tim Keller, and not just a few sermons, but many. It goes way back. Then I said, and then there's paragraph. There is part of me that wants to ignore this whole thing. And that's true. It really is true. I I really don't like doing this. Uh, But Christ, ah, the gospel is essential. Sin needs to be killed, ladies and gentlemen. We need to murder our sin. If you're walking in faith, then you're walking, killing your sin, walking by faith and not by sight, putting on the full armor of God. And we have such weak churches and such weak believers that they bow anytime the culture, the government, the whomever says, jump, says, do it, do this thing. And most people say, yeah, sure, I guess. I just, you know, I just want to get along. I just want to be nice. There is no commandment to be nice, ladies and gentlemen. Now we should be loving. But just because you're loving, you spank your child as a father or mother, or you are a teacher and you maybe still discipline a child, or the police, you arrest somebody. You are doing these things lovingly. You're not doing these things, you shouldn't be, harming them, but you're doing it lovingly. So love isn't always nice and squishy and hallmarky. It's hard sometimes. So this is in love. It really is. I I, I don't want to. I want Lytton to fully see the weight of his sin, if this is what it is, which... It's pretty evident that's what it is, and we'll see more on the we'll see more on the recording in a moment, the interview. But then I go on and say, "There's part of me that wants to ignore this." Okay, I'm I'm paraphrasing a little bit. It's very close. It's very hard to deny the very close similarities of used words, mannerisms, and illustrations. Then, at minimum, Lytton must do far better job at addressing these issues. If resignation and a time of renewal is needed, then so be it. Eternity is far longer than seventy or eighty years anyone generally has on this blue marble we call home. New paragraph. We all saw that he said were unnamed sources should give us pause. Well, that doesn't work because they're not baseless allegations. There are mountains of video evidence of Lytton himself and many other people calling him out. Justin Peters is merely one. Not just one sermon, but several. Further similarities between Roman sermon, his associate pastor also preaches. I think it's Romans chapter 12, and I've got a video on that. Plagiarism bad is bad. It is a sin. Lying is bad. It is also a sin. And if it was a non-sinful person, and if there is a non-sinful reason why so many sermons look the same and others have vanished from the website and YouTube and others, please give it, all caps. The Lord is watching. 
Not the world. Forget the world, ultimately. Oh, the world, they'll know you. Okay, Jesus says this. Yeah, but what about Jesus? Is he watching too? Or are we just kind of being squishy because Jesus isn't physically walking around? If he was next to you right now, would you be looking at pornography? Would you be yelling at your wife? Would you be plagiarizing sermons? Would you be stealing that thing from the grocery store? No, of course you wouldn't. And he is watching, right? And we're all sinning, even in our own hearts, because even when we get angry, we've murdered and we've looked with lust, we've already committed adultery. So we're all murderous adulterers. That's why we need his grace. That's why we need his grace. That's why Jesus is so important, so vital. As I said, I don't really want to do this. My nerves are higher than normal and calling out someone is not something I usually do. But this is public. Lytton is the president of the denomination I belong to. The world is watching, yes. And more importantly, again, the Lord Jesus is watching. Paraphrase, get down a little bit more. Ed Lytton must address these issues more robustly and comprehensively. And I and others, and many, many others are concerned that these things are true, if they're true, and nothing is done about it. Harsh judgment will come from the Lord. Lest we forget Ananias and Sapphira, who lied to the Holy Spirit at church and were struck dead. If it's sin, then it must, he must step down from the presidency and the pulpit. God's grace is there for the humble. It is there for the sinner, even the backslidden. Please, in Christ, Richard Henry. We're dealing with this love, 1 Corinthians style love. This is the definition, right? You read it at a marriage or at a wedding and so on. In, in teaching. So I did listen to him. And um, so uh, here's what I want to make it very clear. Like any pastor, uh, I used his material to help me outline it. And then I resource his material after I'd done the Greek work, after I'd read my commentaries, try to get a sense of how this is, this passage needs to be explained to my people. And, and there's a couple of places in particular where we share the same outline. And there's a couple of places in particular where I used a lot of phrases that he did. And, and, and I just want to say this. I'm, I want to be clear. I think the older you get, the more set you get in language. And you, you tend to rely on what you've used in the past. I've always been the guy who wants to always figure out, am I really connecting with people, my people? I want them to understand this. I didn't do this, what I did, what it appears that I did. I don't think it's exactly what actually I did. But what it appears that I did. Not that I actually did. I don't think that I did. I mean, you just heard it. So it appears that he plagiarized. So here's the thing. He's saying they're baseless allegations. They should give us pause in an, in an interview, a couple interviews, right? Because he's the Southern Baptist president. People want to talk to him. And then now he's saying, yeah, so I got his information. JD said it's fine. You can use it. Now, that doesn't mean you can take it and then act like it's yours. That never means that, just by the way. And even if someone does say, hey, you know what? I wrote a bunch of sermons for you, that you to use. That's totally fine. Oh, okay. So what? If your friend says, hey, man, I, just, I know you need a car. I just got you a car. Oh, dude, amazing. How'd you afford this? Oh, I didn't. I mean, I stole it. It's fine, though. You can have it. Um... Yeah, but like you stole it. I'm not going to keep this. I'm going to get arrested. This is wrong. Whose car is this? It doesn't matter. I, it's fine. You need a car. You need it more than he does. Just because your friend says it's fine doesn't make it fine, Pastor Lytton. Peruvian. San Pablo region. It's almost gone. So I'm going to have to some, do something else soon. Just because someone says it's fine doesn't make it fine. Right? So he, he starts and says, well, I didn't intend to use it. He got all the outlines. Romans is 16 chapters. It is a Beast of a book. It is the magnum opus, most people call it. Like the Gospel of Romans, people will say. So Romans is a huge book. And he goes on to say, oh, I, I didn't, you know, Romans is a big book. It's intimidating. But what does he say? But I'm not going to use it. Now I use it. And okay, fine. But then... So there's allegations of plagiarism. And it's not just, oh, Ed Litton plagiarizes by a few people. You know, making salacious videos like this. Ooh, Sisley right? Um, controversy, but controversy, but him himself. And where did all these other sermons go to? Like dozens and dozens, probably a couple hundred, you know, data dump. Why did they get removed? I mean, how many times is Piper or uh, Mark Driscoll or uh, Doug Wilson or somebody else like that done that? 
right? Like David Jeremiah or, or, or Robert Jeffers. Has, anybody, has any of these other big pastors or even Andy Stanley or Joel Osteen, just big data dump. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to just take a bunch of sermons down just, you know, <clears throat> just because. Why? Why'd you, why'd you do that? Why is your wife preaching a series? He doesn't address the Tim Keller stuff at all that he preached 2013 uh, marriage series. Did he have Tim Keller's permission? Did Tim Keller say, yeah, you can have my marriage series? I don't think so. He doesn't mention that at all anywhere. So you still have a problem with lying about that and stealing other people's sermons. So you're not addressing it. And sadly, he doesn't address it here. So it's like, I want to believe you and I just want to be done. And I want some healing and I want you to bring some racial healing or whatever. I mean, I think it's already here, but you know, some people still are convinced otherwise uh, that it's not for some reason. But he's a unifier and okay, great. But you're not being truthful. You're not being forthright. You're, I'm not going to use this, then I do use it. And then I kind of use some of his stuff. Okay, let's listen. But, but the point is, when I, when I did it, I wasn't trying to make a name for myself. Uh, I was trying to help my people understand scripture. And I'll be honest with you, Romans is an intimidating book for me. Now, you guys are a lot smarter than I am. It's probably not as intimidating for you. But it was. So I, I did rely on that. Here's the problem. I had permission, which I think means it's not plagiarism. The problem was I didn't, and it's it's obvious that I did not tell my people exactly the source that it came from. I didn't cite the commentaries I read either. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. So he says, what? He says that, oh, I, I didn't I didn't cite the sources. In all 16 chapters of his Roman series that he did for, what, a year, I guess? Something like that. I mean, that's a tiny amount of time to work on the book of Romans. But, you know, anyway. He didn't do it once. He didn't think, like, if I'm in school and I'm writing a paper and I'm reading from this book and then I'm reading from this book and then I read, you know, from this book and I get this and I get this thing. Or here's a paper, here's a journal. And I'm citing these things. You don't say, oh, yeah. I borrowed these. Oh, my friend J.D. Greer used this. He preached this recently. Even if he said it at the first sermon or the first couple sermons, hey, you know, just wanted to let everybody know in the essence of transparency. And so, you know, plagiarizing is a sin. It's lying. It's deceptive. Uh, it's stealing. I, 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 I'm using these with J.D. Greer's permission. And we're going to work through some of the same stuff. But we're going to apply this to us here in Mobile, uh, Alabama. Okay. I mean, that's a little bit better, right? That's a little bit better. But he doesn't say it once. It doesn't occur to you once. You've been a pastor for two and a half decades at this point, Ed Litton. You've gone to seminary, college before that, undergrad before, right? Like, or uh, K through 12 before that. You have a demon from Southern. Do you not remember citing things? Do you not remember doing stuff and giving attribution where attribution is due? I mean, it was Joe Biden in 1988 that he cited a British guy, and it was some Labour Party guy, that's the Democrats there in, in um, England, and 1988 was his first out of three uh, presidential runs. Biden runs for, against Joe, uh, <laughs> Joe Biden, Biden runs against Bush Sr., he loses, right, he drops out of the race, it was actually Dukakis uh, that, was it Dukakis? I think it was. Anyway, one speech ruined Joe Biden the first time in 1988, over 30 years ago, because he was caught citing a guy and telling a story as if it was his own and talking about his wife, but it was really the other guy's wife, right? And, and this and this and this. And that derailed and demolished Joe Biden's first of many presidential losses. What? <laughs> like, are you kidding me right now? And yet... This is prolonged in the Christian church. Albert Moeller, 2006. And with his guests, I did an episode on that. Um, I don't know, however many episodes ago. And many guys. He cites a guy in Salt Lake. He cites a guy in Cincinnati. He cites a guy, I think, Oklahoma, Kansas, a bunch of other guys. And that was in 2006. This was 15 years ago now. There have been many other guys. I just saw it recently. Another guy got canned for plagiarizing other sermons. Now, does that matter? Does theft matter? Because theft, you're stealing, but he says it's fine. I don't think it's plagiarism. Notice that. He doesn't think it's plagiarism, but he didn't tell his people. <sighs> By golly, shoot. But why didn't you tell your people? So for, so we're just going to set aside for a moment and just say, fine. Shh, cut it off. 
No big deal. You didn't plagiarize. It's not stolen. Okay. But you didn't tell your people. That's called lying. And all liars will have their place in the lake of fire, Revelation says. So, like, is that kind of a big deal? Do you really care about that? Or why didn't you tell them? Why? I, 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 this, he doesn't answer it. He doesn't say, I was in a really weird space. I was in sin. I was this. I was this. He doesn't, ultimately, it doesn't seem like he wants to uh, release power. He doesn't want to lose. He doesn't want to look like an idiot. And so he wants to save face. Uh, I, I want to give the benefit of the doubt, right? Does not rejoice in wrongdoing. I'm not rejoicing in this wrongdoing, but it seems like He's not, not rejoicing, but he's also not admitting all the wrongdoing. It's not rude. hope I'm not being rude. I really do. It's patient. It's kind. Does not insist on its own way. It's not resentful. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So I'm trying to endure this, right? I'm trying to hope this. I'm trying to believe this. And I'm trying to even bear with this. My church... Many dozens, probably hundreds, if not thousands of other Southern Baptist churches are looking at this and either saying, yeah, I'm done. I'm good. That's good. Or, nope, I'm out. Or, Ugh, come on, Pastor Litton. Come on, Dr. Reverend, Honorable President Litton. Please, please, please do something a little bit better. Please, you're just, it's not quite enough. Not quite enough. And and so uh, that's what I have. I have apologized to my people. They have very warmly accepted that of uh, our leadership and I've sat down and we've talked about how we can correct this and we're in the process of correcting it. I'm fasting from certain things I've always done in preaching and uh, approaching every, every message I preach, whether it's at the convention or at a location of, where, or in our own church, I'm approaching it differently. Okay. So that's good. He's approaching it differently, but why didn't you approach it differently a few months ago? Where did all these other sermons go? Why didn't you approach it differently when you were plagiarizing Tim Keller's stuff? Why is your wife preaching? Why did you do that without any explanation? I mean, it's just, it's so, so suspicious. I mean, it's like the kid who walks up and is like, you know, got this and you hear this and they're, they're standing there awkwardly like, hey, what's going on? And you're like, yeah, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, no, nothing. I always stand like this. And you're like... You don't always stand like that. What are, you, what are you hiding? Oh, 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 this? Oh, yeah, I just, I don't know how. I, I don't, uh, I, I forgot this was here. I didn't, I was, I've never seen this before. I thought it was, uh, I like the color orange. Like, it's, it's just like, what, what are you, what are you doing? What's going on? Why are you acting so suspicious? And, uh, and so this is, I take this very seriously. And this is what I share with my people. Every week, you have trusted me for 27 years to be a man of truth. And, uh, and so I have to tell you the truth. And if you can't trust me, then I have no basis of leadership in this church. And so uh, we're, we're grateful for the opportunity to address it. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, I believe the Lord's forgiven me. And I believe that the Lord is helping me learn even a stronger, better way to communicate. And we're moving on. Uh, we feel like we're, we're dealing with it. And, uh, we're moving forward. Thank you for... Uh, we feel like we're... Okay, so we're moving on. So he's, he's forgiven. He's been forgiven. So is it plagiarizing then? Did you actually lie? Because you're being forgiven of something that the Lord has forgiven you of, but... If it wasn't lying, why? If it okay, if it was lying, why didn't you say that to begin with? Why didn't you? Why did? Why did you say to media outlets and others? Oh, that should give us pause. You know, they're unnamed sources and da 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 da. Why? Why did this have to be brought up by people like me and many others doing better work than I on digging up stuff and showing this? James White's talked about this. Multiple people have talked about this. Why? <laughs> now it's like oh. Yeah, I found the re they're in my hand. Uh yeah. I'm really sorry. The Lord's forgiven me for trying to steal the Reese's King Cup, King King size. Uh, and my my church. You're not just sinned against your church, you've sinned against the the public. You've sinned against the SBC. You should st at minimum you should step down because you've now admitted to wrongdoing, right? And oh, I don't know. What does this say? Does not rejoice in wrongdoing. So we're supposed to love one another, as he cites in John 13. 
Okay. I'm loving you. Step down, Ed Litton. Step down. At least from the presidency. Minimum. And like, seriously, I don't care that you're way more leftist and woke than other people. I really don't care because you have almost zero, well, you have zero uh, effect over my church or any other Southern Baptist church that doesn't want to go woke. My concern is your soul. And also my concern is the representation that you bring to the Southern Baptist Convention for the world. The world's watching. The Lord is watching. And we must take these things more seriously. Ananias and Sapphira, as I cited in my email. What about Achan with the, you know, he's aching for the gold. He steals the gold and he gets stoned. What about Aaron's sons, right? In Leviticus, Nadab and Abihu. Oh, you know, let's be a little creative. Let's do a little something different with this. Yeah, well, God says to do this, but, you know, we're going to offer some strange fire and just kind of see what happens. God kills them. People have gotten sick and died because they've taken the Lord's table wrongly. Does God still kill people? Yeah, probably. Why wouldn't he? Especially if people are still in sin. I'm not saying that's going to happen to Ed Litton, but it easily could. It easily could happen to me and you and anybody else. This is why we need to take our sin seriously. We need to mortify it, as the old phrase goes. Kill it. Murder your sin. He takes it seriously. He wants to take this seriously. He says, I, I don't know if I can believe him because he's not confessed and said, look, I did plagiarize. I should have told this. I lied at minimum. I'm very deeply sorry. People apologize for far less especially in the world and even in the church. For far less, this is egregious. This is actual against God's word. But rejoices with the truth. The truth has to have a foundation, which is, of course, the Lord Jesus. The truth has to have a cornerstone, which is the truth become flesh and dwelling among us. This word. I am the truth, Jesus says. And what's the opposite of truth? Lies. So minimum, you didn't steal it. Fine, fine, you didn't steal it. J.D. Greer said you could have it. All 16 chapters, all laid out, even words and illustrations where you say the same thing multiple different times in multiple different series, not just Romans, but also in Tim Keller's series and other series as well, going back at least eight years or more. But we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. All those guys that you preached other guys' sermons gave you permission. Fine. You still lied. And you lied for eight years, and now all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, shoot, I need to find a different way to do sermon prep. Well, you know what? I've been a pastor not even a year, and I've never lied to my congregation about that. Or my congregation lied to my congregation in general. It's not that hard to not lie. <laughs> if you're walking in the truth, if you're walking in the light, you're now finding a new way to sermon prep. Oh, okay, great. Except for like, why didn't you do this eight years ago or, I don't know, 27 years ago because you've been a pastor for 27 years. I have another video that he says, he, li he, he said, oh, to be honest, I used to lie about how long it would take. In sermon prep? Seriously? Oh, 20, 30 hours, yeah, Greek work, blah, blah, blah. Why, why should we believe you now when you've admitted to lying? It's been longer. Um, this isn't enough. This podcast, sure, it's a little bit more. But he's admitted now to wrongdoing. He's at minimum said, I lied. He's now been lying for eight years. That's my desire, to help you be against the world for the sake of the world. Please share this content. Like, subscribe. It does help the algorithm. Push the little, the little likey thing, you know, that. Um, and, and share it and all that. Because something like this, Ed Litton, needs to take ownership. He really does. He needs to see what's going on and see that this is egregious and... Um, yeah, that's it. Hope you're well and be against the world for the sake of the world. All right. Take care, y'all. Bye.